Hello, class. I hope you're all doing well. Um, this section, uh, uh, the first exam material, is going to be, um, I don't know how many lectures I'll finish it up, but the very first one, uh, and I try not to have more than uh, an hour or so, 45 minutes, an hour, because you guys get bored and then uh, you lose your attention. So I try to have it within one hour and to lecture everything, you know, not everything, the whole entire section, but just the, uh, each section, each session, I should say, uh, I would lecture for about an hour and hour. You know, it depends. So for this one, I'm planning to do uh, different type of tissues and the nervous system. So it might take a little bit longer than an hour, uh, but I try to finish it up within one hour. But anyhow, let's move on. So uh, there are four different type of animal tissue, and this is chapter nine, and then uh, I think it's uh, the nervous system is chapter 33. You refer to your syllabus, they're all in there. So uh, four different type of tissues we uh, all animals have. And then the focus of this chapter is on human tissues, okay? There could be a combination, you will see, of different tissues in other animals, but the focus is on human, this uh, first, uh, exam is focused on human. So, and a tissue, the definition of tissue is a combination of cells, a group of cells make up a tissue and that tissue has a specific function or those cells have a specific function is called a tissue. The very first one, epithelial tissue and the function of epithelial tissue is to protection, secretion, like your glands, protection, your like your skin, your glands are made up of uh, epithelial tissue. And then as time goes on, you will see uh, different functions of epithelial tissue. But for now is uh, secretion, protection, absorption in your intestine. They absorb nutrient and food. And then in, you will see in your trachea, they push the dirt. You know, they are, of course, protecting you uh, and so on and so forth up to your throat. The next one, muscular tissue, which I'm going to talk about each one of these in detail uh, in a minute, but muscular tissue, it is, um, uh, you have three of them. You have smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, and cardiac muscle. And uh, the function of the muscular tissue is to move something. So skeletal muscle will move you, smooth muscle move something within a tube, and cardiac muscle pumps the blood in your heart and then um, so you get uh, uh, to the rest of the body. Nervous tissue, that is something that controls you and coordinates you with help of the endocrine system, with the help of glands. So nervous tissue and endocrine system controls and coordinate the animal. Connective tissue, it connects everything uh, together, all of the above tissues. I had a histology professor in Tennessee. He used to say anything that is not epithelial tissue, muscular tissue, connective tissue, is connective tissue, nervous tissue, muscular tissue, epithelial tissue, that they are not them, it's uh, connective tissue. So uh, I will talk about that as well. And it connects, of course, it has a variety of functions. It transports food and nutrients, it stores energy in fat cells, it supports us, our bones, and so on and so forth. Here is a pretty much rundown of all of different type of tissues, if you would. Right here, this is connective tissue. It's broken it down for you guys. So there are different, your red blood cells and white blood cells, your bone, as I talked about it, and the uh, fibers in your body, like your car, uh, the cartilage and tendons, they're all connective tissue. And then you have nervous tissue, right, just right here. That's it, that's nervous tissue, your neurons. And then as I talk about it, muscular tissue, you have three of them, one, two, three. And then epithelial tissue, you will talk about it, um, there are a variety of epithelial tissue and the largest variety of tissues in our body is connective tissue. So connective tissue, as far as the variety is number one, and then I would say number two as variety, 
And then uh, number three and number four, if I have to put them in that order, uh, really doesn't mean, but you should know the most um, uh, variety of tissue that are in our body is connective tissue. Okay, epithelial tissue, uh, simple epithelial tissue, it means you have one layer. Um, squamous epithelial tissue in your mouth, lungs, coelom, we don't know, coelom, it means space. Inner blood vessels, they all are, it means one layer. Simple, it means one layer of epithelial tissue, and you will know uh, what are different ep epithelial tissue. Cuboidal, oh, squamous, it means the cells are flat. You will see that. They're flat like this. And then cuboidal, the cells are like a cube. And of course, they have nucleus right here. And then you have columnar epithelial tissue. And guess what? They are look like a column, and the nucleus is elongated. So, uh, and then of course, the digestive tract and many glands and droplet cells, they're all columnar epithelial tissue. Stratified, it means more than one layer. So if you have four or five layers of epithelial tissue, then it's stratified. If you have only one layer, it is simple epithelial tissue. And then for your lab practical exams and everything else, you should know uh, what are the differences. For example, in, in a blood vessel, you should know what tissue it is covered in blood vessel. Here are some examples. Here are cartoons, the drawings, and here are the real squamous epithelial tissue. Okay, you see it's flat right there. It is flat right here. And underneath, these are all connective tissue. You will see that. Okay, then these are columnar epithelial tissue, nice and beautiful, like a column. And it's only one layer. And these are um, cuboidal, nice and beautiful pictures of cuboidal epithelial tissue, look like a cube look like a cube, okay? And then of course the nucleus in these guys are elongated, nucleus in these guys are round, and nucleus in these guys are flat, okay? So that's what uh, three different type of epithelial tissue. Here are, these are all simple, okay? I should maybe then say that, oh my God. Simple, and then these are all uh, stratified. Okay, so you can see many layers in here of um, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, free surface stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Yeah, and then um, and they're showing you the drawings. And these are the uh, transitional epithelial tissue. Hang on, give me a rain check on that one. We'll uh, talk about it later on. Uh, transitional it means they change the shape. And this is not a good place to uh, explain that. Here, what we have in the lab, here is a cuboidal epithelial tissue. This is columnar epithelial tissue, and this is squamous epithelial tissue, okay? As you can see, it, this is what we have in the lab. The only mistakes in these uh, slides, maybe I would have drawn these a little bit longer, the nucleus, um, the artist and the biologist could not communicate back and forth, and that's what these are. Okay, other types of epithelial tissue, transitional epithelial tissue, they change like accordion, they change the shape, that's what transitional epithelial tissue are, and they are found in your bladder, okay? Then uh, cornified, stratified squamous epithelial tissue, they are underneath of my skin, there is a stratified squamous epithelial tissue, but you will see, we'll talk about skin, on the top layer, there is a cornified layer or, or horny layer, they call it, or um, another name for cornified, um, keratinized, three names for the same thing. Keratinized, stratified, squamous epithelial tissue, and so on and so forth, same thing as cornified, as horny, stratified, squamous epithelial tissue. And that is in your skin. And endothelial tissue, they are one layer of squamous epithelial tissue, and they are uh, they cover the most inner layer of your blood vessels, okay? The most layer of inner of your blood vessels is one layer of uh, epithel uh, squamous epithelial tissue, which is called endothelial tissue. All of your blood vessels, and including your heart, is, is covered by one layer of uh, squamous epithelial tissue. Ciliated pseudostratified columnar, which is in your um, 
trachea. It pushes, uh, those cilia pushes all of the dirt up into your throat. And then you have ciliated columnar epithelial tissue. The ciliated columnar epithelial tissue is found in your in the ovary and the uh, I'm sorry, not in the ovary, in the oviduct and uterus. It's found in uterus, so they push those cilia, uh, push the egg down into the uh, uterus, and then of course uterus has some too. Muscular tissue. So as I said, mu skeletal muscle it moves the animal. So when we move, it's by our skeletal muscle. And it's a striated and it's voluntarily. They have multinuclei. So maybe I should write it down. Multinuclei. Uh, it means uh, one cell has many nuclei. Um, what else? Striated or voluntary. The nucleus are in the parameter of the cells. Okay. So, and then smooth muscle, they have one nucleus per cell and it's not strided and it's not voluntarily. You do not have control over it. Your intestine, your blood vessels, you do not have control over it. Smooth muscles are on your trachea. You do not have control over it, okay? So uh, people who get asthma, uh, you know, those smooth muscles contract without their control. It has one nucleus, one nucleus, and then uh, not strided, and then that's all he said. Cardiac muscle, uh, they are strided uh, only, and it's only found in heart. They can be straight or uh, branched. If you would, they can have one nucleus or they can have multinuclei. Uh, when I draw the branched one here, I said the branched one has two nuclei, not necessarily two. The branched one can has one nucleus as well. Here they are, they are showing you not good pictures, except the skeletal muscle is good. Um, this cardiac muscle, I have better pictures in the lab. Here are integrated disc, integrated disc, and these are all striation. And then smooth muscle, horrible picture of smooth muscle. We have better pictures in the lab. Here's a cardiac muscle, perfect. You can see the integrated disc right here, integrated disc, integrated disc right there, and then here are the, what the models we have in the lab. So here is a cardiac muscle, and here is an integrated disc. Here is integrated disc. The cells is branched. They have one nucleus or two per cell. This is skeletal muscle. You can see the striation, and the nucleus is in the per, uh, periphery. You have multinuclei. The smooth muscle, there is no striation. Skeletal, and then smooth, okay? So, um, and they have one nucleus per cell. I hope I explain it. New, the nervous system, the next one is our uh, nervous tissue neurons. Uh, this is an example of a neuron, which on the, uh, you know, the, um, the outside is our uh, dendrites. All of these are dendrites. This is the cell body. The cytoplasm and nucleus combined together in a cell body. And this is the axon, okay? At the end, you have axon terminals, okay? So we'll talk, here is what we have in the lab. Here is a dendrite, 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 okay? So this is a cell body right here. Um, this is a cell membrane right here. And then uh, the axons would be something like that. They're running like this, they're running like that. Uh, so that's a neuron. And you, what you see outside of neuron, these little dots, they are, they are called astrocytes. That's a C one. Astrocyte, and they are supportive cells of the neuron. Here it is as far as a, now they cut off, I don't like it. Uh, they cut off the cell body from the axon, but they're supposed to be connected together. So this is a cross section of the axon. This is myelin sheath. All of this is myelin sheath. And this is the Schwann cell right here. And this is the nucleus of the Schwann cell. And these are all dendrites, okay? So these are all dendrites. And then of course you can see the axon here. This is the node of Ranvier right there. 
this is another node of Van Dier. So, um, so you can see those. Here's another uh, neuron we have in the lab. These are all dendrites right there. So this is the uh, cell body right here. And this is the axon and it ends in um, axon terminals at the end. And then uh, at the end of the axon terminal are the smooth muscles. Here's the last slide we looked at. It. Okay, type of uh, nerve cells. There are two basic cells, uh, cell types. And uh, one neurons, a neuron, structural and functional unit of the nervous system. And the other one is neuroglia. Neuroglia is a non-nervous cells that insulates neurons and support nervous functions. And what they are, they are mainly functions. And I had a student many years ago, he was researching, he, he left Delta, he went to UC Davis. And he said, Amir, uh, they're finding in there, for example, in astrocytes, there are some conductions taking place. It's just not the neuron. The supportive cells also, you know, conduction means a transfer information from one cell to the next cell, from one neuron to the next neuron. So anyhow. Types of connective tissue, oh boy. <laughs> um, every textbook you open up, they classify connective tissue differently. Uh, but let's stick to this. Let's say you know, loose connective tissue. They are also known as a ruler, a ruler connective tissue that serves as packing uh, material and then uh, found in blood vessels, nerves, and organs, and fibroblasts that may synthesize fibers, macrophages. And then dense connective tissue, which you will see it. Uh, we do not have slide of tendons and ligaments, but you will see dense irregular connective tissue in the skin. So we have dense irregular connective tissue. And specialized connective tissue, it's not a bad classification. They are like uh, a blood, uh, they are uh, bone, um, fat cells, adipocytes, lymph, cartilage. These are all called specialized um, connective tissue. And that's not a bad classification. Here's a uh, slide of cartilage. Here is a dense, uh, Connective tissue, what you have, we do not have this in the lab. We do not have this in the lab, but we have um, uh, dense irregular connective tissue. Okay, this is dense connective tissue, but this, this is dense irregular. And then you have loose fiber connective tissue, and then you have the bone, and then we'll talk about all of those in detail. Uh, I'm done with tissues. So um, there are uh, the way that works, as you know, we, I talked about it, cells make up tissues, a few tissues together make up organ, and a few organ together make up system. Okay. So tissues, you saw it, epithelial tissue, you have squamous epithelial tissue, and they make up a uh, epithelial tissue, and then a few of those epithelial tissue and maybe another tissue, connective tissue, they make up your uh, gland, your gland, uh, your um, salivary glands right here. Your salivary glands will, with your teeth and your mouth and your esophagus and your uh, large intestine, small intestine, anus, rectum, and so on and so forth, it makes up your digestive system. Hope I'm making so your 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 salivary gland is an organ. So I hope you have made some sense. So the biggest of all of these, that's maybe you should know. Uh, you know the order is cell, tissue, organ, uh, system. So the biggest one is system, and then after system is organism. Sorry, it's you right here. This is made up of uh, uh, twelve system, uh, but different textbooks say, some textbooks say 10, don't argue with me these, these things. Um, every textbook is different. So, but anyhow, it's around there, 12, 10, whatever you have, 14, I don't know, different textbooks say different things. Uh, nervous system, skeletal system, muscular system, integumentary system, that would be what? Your skin, okay? Uh, cardiovascular system, of course, your heart and your blood vessels. Uh, respiratory system, you know that. Your lungs, digestive system, 
your esophagus, intestine, urinary system is your kidney. Kidney, uh, bladder, ureter, urethra, all of that is your urinary system. Reproductive system, you're familiar with that. Endocrine system, your glands. Okay. And then your sense organ, which is part of the nervous system. But again, most textbooks like this, they are, they are referred to as a sense organ, uh, but they, it, since it's long, they put it in different channels. And immune system, your white blood cells and the rest of nine yard and many other things. What comes in the system. Okay, the very first system, I don't know how long I've been talking, but let's talk about uh, nervous system. Uh, <coughs> another 25, 30 minutes and then I'm done. I forgot to bring some water. Uh, my throat is not used to talk uh, for this long, but anyhow, I'm getting. Uh, so a nerve cord, this is a diagram of a nerve cord. I don't know if you've guys seen a cable that inside of it there are many wires and each wire is surrounded by a uh, plastic. The, the, each wire is a copper, okay? So imagine those wires right here are the axon and it's made up of copper. And then the Schwann cell around it right here covers the copper, the axon, okay? And those are the plastic. I'm making an analogy, guys. I'm making an analogy. And those Schwann cells, and I will talk about them in detail, hang on. So those Schwann cells, there are two types of Schwann cells, myelinated and unmyelinated, okay? In this one, this is a myelinated Schwann cells. And you can see like a pizza dough, you wrap it around your arm several times. But if you take a pita bread, you can wrap it around. They both are made up of bread, right? I hope I'm making some sense. Uh, it just, you can wrap around once upon your arm. Here is the Schwann cell that is not myelinated and wraps around the axon, okay? So these are the wire cords and plastic around them. Some of them have more plastic. Some of them have just one time plastic. And all of those wires, they go inside of this, a bigger wire, a bigger cord, and that cord is called fascicles, okay? And that fascicles, two, three, four of them are surrounded by a bigger connective tissue. So all of these are connective tissue. This is also connective tissue, okay? This, the material outside of that fascicle is connective tissue. And I'll show you a picture here in a minute. So in this slide, you should know two, three things. If I ask you, what is the structure of a, uh, a nerve bundle? A nerve bundle, that's what this is. This is a nerve bundle. Number one, you should tell me the difference between myelinated and unmyelinated neuron. Number two, you should tell me that the, each uh, axon is surrounded by Schwann cell. And then a lot of neurons, which are surrounded by Schwann cells, then are surrounded by connective tissue, which is called fascicle. And then each fascicle is surrounded by a bigger connective tissue that is called nerve bundle. I hope I made some sense. It's just like a cable. You've seen cables before. I, although I used to have one and I don't know, some near, mysteriously it disappeared. I guess somebody took it for its copper. Okay. Here is a picture of it, not this one. This is a, a blood vessel uh, artery, but focus on these. So this is the connective tissue I was talking about. This is all fat. These are all fat cells. Okay, but that's the connective tissue around a nerve bundle. And these all cross section of the axon. Okay, do I have a, yeah, perfect. This is axon, this is myelin sheath, the white. The myelin sheath, the white, and this is axon, myelin sheath, the white. This is the connective tissue right here. And in this nerve bundle, you have a lot of axon surrounded by uh, Schwann cells, okay? So here is, uh, you know, a myelinated neuron and unmyelinated neuron. This is un 
myelinated neuron and this is a myelinated neuron. So that's the difference. And of course, each Schwann cell has a nucleus, right? So how does a neuron contract? Said a little bit, um, getting too important and stuff a little bit. How does a neuron uh, is contracted? So what happens, uh, you know this one, these are all uh, dendrites right here. This is a cell body. So if I poke a neuron right here, I poke it, I poke myself, okay? I feel it. Right now I don't feel anything, but right now I feel something, right? You know that. So what happens outside of an axon right here, outside of an axon right here, there is many, 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 many sodium. What happens when you get poked, the axon get poked, what will happen? This sodium rushes in. All of that sodium comes in. And inside of the neuron that was neg that is negatively charged with help of protein molecules and ATP and other things, inside is negatively charged, it becomes positively charged. Okay. And then, <clears throat> so, and we call this action potential. And I will talk about it. Hang on a little bit. Just hang on. Stay with me for a little bit longer. So before... I poke myself, when this is dressed, the axon is at rest, this axon is at rest. What happens, the voltage, if I attach a voltmeter, do I have a voltmeter? No, I don't. No, I don't. If I attach a voltmeter here, and then another electrode outside, here's a voltmeter right there. Okay. So what happens, it shows minus 40 millivolt, okay? Compare the outside to inside, it's polarized. That membrane, the axon membrane is polarized. It means outside is positively charged and inside is negatively charged. How much it is inside is minus 40 millivolt. Millivolt, very small, small, very small voltage. And then when the axon get poked like this, when I poke it like that, okay, what happens? The sodium rushes in. And when it rushes in, it goes all the way. Can you guys see this? It goes all the way from minus 40 millivolt, uh, minus 70, I'm sorry. I said minus 40. Minus 70, 60, 70 millivolt. It goes all the way to 40 millivolt. And 40 millivolt, that's where action potential is. And after that, it goes back to its normal state, a little bit, they call it hypopoten um, uh, hypopotential, but anyhow, uh, do not worry about that term. So what happens right here, it goes back to normal of the 60 millivolt, back to resting potential. So what happens the action potential goes from every little segment of the axon. Every little segment of the axon, you got to go through. So they call this all or none, all or none. So it cannot happen. A portion of the axon gets stimulated and the rest of it does not get stimulated. That does not happen. What did I say? Uh, potassium ions more inside, sodium ions more outside, action potential is all of them. Okay, right here, they are showing you uh, the axon helox. I'm not worried about that term. It does not come to our use, but they are showing you minus, um, this, this is the resting potential right here. Also right here is the resting potential. You guys follow what I'm talking about? Minus 70 millivolt. When neuron stimulated, then a lot of sodium rushes in, okay? So it goes to how positive inside of the cell becomes 40 millivolt. That's how positive it becomes inside of the cell. Before inside of the cell was minus 70 millivolt right here. That is minus 70 millivolt. Oh, shoot, 
No, I, no, I do not have anything to talk to you with. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Anyhow. So um, let's move on. And of course, action potential, it must go all across the axon. So uh, summarizing it, a resting uh, state, no net uh, ion flow across the membrane, not much. Um, sodium gate starts to open up and some sodium enter the neuron and many sodium uh, gets out and uh, sodium gates in, potassium gates close, sodium gates close and potassium gates open up. All of these, I number them for you. Number four, number three, number two, start the sodium gate starts opening up at number one. The sodium gates, I mean, there are little gates here, if you would, and they open up so sodium can get in. Okay, that's what sodium gates mean. In bio, when we, we talk, they talk about it, those protein molecules on the surface of the cell membrane. Um, bio one, they talk about it. Anyhow. So now what happens? This is a unmyelinated neuron, and this is a myelinated neuron, okay? So if this is Schwann cell, when action potential arrives here, then they, it jumps from one node of Ranvier to the, the next node of Ranvier, okay? Here, they go through each segment. They go through every un unmyelinated neuron. And when they jump, the action potential jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier. It's called saltatory conduction. This is much faster. Animals that evolve in the evolution, they evolve to have neurons like this. Animals like jellyfish, hydra, which you're going to learn about them later on, they have neuron like this. They're not myelinated, okay? So uh, saltatory conduction, when the action potential, it runs from node of Ranvier to the node of Ranvier, jumps from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier. Okay, so the question is, I mean, so what? Inside of the neuron becomes positively charged, then, uh, uh, then they go out, the sodium goes out, it goes back to normal. What happens? So what? So what is, what is the big deal? Out right here. When the action potential reaches the at the end of the axon, we have axon knob. This is called axon knob. Number first thing you should know that calcium gets in. When calcium gets in in biology one, for the vesicles to move on a railroad track, you need calcium. Okay, so the vesicles are moving. These vesicles are full of, these little dots are called neurotransmitters, okay? Right here is the term, neurotransmitters. So when these vesicles move by help of calcium to get in inside of the cell, when action potential reaches to the end of the axon knob, these are called axon knob right here, right there. So then the cell membrane, the vesicles you learn in biology one is made up of phospholipid, they attaches to this one and release neurotransmitters. And the next, this is called postsynaptic neuron, post. This is all called presynaptic neuron. So when the presynaptic neuron were stimulated, release the neurotransmitters to uh, between the synapse, that space, you see that blue space or purple space right here is called synapse. When they release it there, then the neurotransmitters go and sit on these receptors and cause sodium channels to open up. And of course, yes, there are sodium here too. When the sodium channels open up, the sodium comes in and to the next neuron, the postsynaptic neuron, then postsynaptic neuron has action potential. I hope that makes sense. Let's go over it again. Here are hundreds of axon knobs from another neuron, from presynaptic neuron. They go to postsynaptic neuron. 
this is a post synaptic neuron. Okay. And then here they are explaining it again in detail what is happening. And then those neurotransmitters, they sit on the sodium channels and open up the sodium channels so sodium can get in. Here, this diagram has it summarized for you guys. I'm not gonna go over it. I'll let you study it. And then the only thing I did not mention is the name of the uh, neurotransmitter right here is called acetylcholine right here. It's made, up, it's made up of acetyl and choline and there are enzymes on presynaptic, on the postsynaptic neuron. There are enzymes right here, that's an enzyme that break these down to acetyl and choline and they go back to presynaptic neuron and presynaptic neuron uh, put them together and make acetylcholine ready for the next neuron, uh, next uh, action potential. Here they are showing you what is happening, everything that we talked about it, dendrite cell body, nucleus, and then uh, myelin sheath, uh, neurolemma, uh, the membrane of the Schwann cell is called neurolemma, Schwann cells uh, with nucleus, node of Ronvier, and uh, they, they mentioned Ronvier, but you should know that axon and uh, myoneural junction, or I called it in your lab, uh, my, ah, I'm forgetting now. <laughs> uh, muscular neurojunction, muscular neurojunction. Here they are, muscular neurojunctions. Right there, these are axon knob. Right there, these are axon knob, axon knob. And here they are axon. Okay. And here's skeletal muscle. <coughs> and here are neurons. Okay. You have that slide for the lab. One example quickly, let's go over the, uh, this. Uh, this, is called, this is called reflex arc. We have different type of reflex in our body. This is called reflex arc. So sneezing, coughing, they're all reflexes. When you go to a doctor, they shine a light into your eye um, to measure your reflexes. So when you go to a doctor, they, uh, you know, they put a hammer in your knee and that's a reflex. So what happens well, when, in, um, when a neuron stimulated, in this case by pressure, if you would, uh, by hitting it. So there is a neuron called sensory neuron. It takes the stimulus into the spinal cord. And in the spinal cord, there is another neuron called association neuron association neuron, or another name for it is interneuron. And then action potential arrives from sensory neuron, then sensory neuron is presynaptic neuron, association neuron is postsynaptic neuron. Neurotransmitter released the whole nine yard then from association neuron or interneuron, then the action potential goes into motor neuron. Motor neuron always end up into the muscles. So motor neuron now is postsynaptic neuron. Association neuron now, it is a presynaptic neuron. It was postsynaptic neuron, but now it's presynaptic neuron. I hope I'm making some sense. Here they are, they're showing you the interneuron association neuron when you put your hand on a hot stove or um, you put it on a nail, you quickly remove the information that's not go to the brain, the information goes to the spinal cord, move your hand, don't get hurt. And then later on you say, ah, cut myself or burn myself, I better go get some ice. That, that information is analyzed by the brain. Um, they are, um, God, if I want to talk about this, then uh, the material for this exam gets, becomes humongous. So I will not talk about it, but I, I will not a ask questions about it in the exam. But you should know uh, sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system, they work opposite of each other in most cases. For example, in case of your eye, the sympathetic nervous system dilate your eye and uh, the um, the parasympathetic nervous system, it constricts your eye, okay? 
And that's what happens in most cases, you guys. Uh, you just go through it. If you, when you go to medical school, you have to know these in detail, all, every one of them. When you take anatomy again, you have to know it, at least when I took it anatomy. anatomy. Uh, parts of the brain that I want you to know, there are the four lobes, and then you have to know, say, bellum right here. This is say bellum and pons and medulla oblongata. Okay, so uh, I labeled the functions in here. So you should know the functions uh, of the uh, of the lobes and of course uh, the functions uh, say bellum balance and coordination, occipital lobe for vision, parietal lobe uh, is sensory portion of it and uh, parietal lobe a uh, portion of this motor neuron, and they broke it down for you guys. Uh, uh, so frontal lobe, uh, parietal lobe, frontal, I'm not sure what the heck he's talking about. Frontal lobe, did I label this? Oh, uh, yes, frontal lobe is also responsible for your motor neuron. Okay, so that's another thing. And then your, um, your, um, your temporal lobes is uh, uh, for hearing, course, your uh, frontal lobe is also responsible for your smell, plus your uh, motor uh, uh, hearing is uh, uh, your temporal right here. Frontal is right here for a sense of smell. And then your pons for breathing and um, uh, other functions. So breathing is important. And medulla oblongata, did I mention that? Uh, medulla oblongata is just, like okay, I didn't mention it is a connection um, uh, between your brain and the spinal cord, okay? Right here, they're giving you a rundown of what's going on and um, anyhow. I don't expect you to know any other part that the um, corpus callosum and thalamus, very important, they're very, very important. But again, uh, for this class, I, I have to um, narrow it down a little bit because what we need later on. So the eye, uh, the most important of your senses is the eye. And the eye is the only thing that we mentioned later on during semester, the eyes of the animals, uh, compound eye and simple eye in arthropods or in squids, um, octopus, they have eyes. So that's why you should know the eye. So what happens, the eye is like an onion. It has many layers, uh, but it starts from uh, the very outside, uh, which is this is the iris, the color of the, uh, determines the color of the eye of each person. And the iris has an opening, that opening is called pupil. And in front of the eye, there is a clear area, which is called cornea. The most successful transplant is cornea. And then, because there's not much blood vessels in there. It's made up of epithelial tissue. And then behind the pupil is the lens. And lens is attached to ciliary muscles, which it can uh, extend the lens for far vision and near sight. Okay. And then behind the lens, there is a huge chamber of fluid. It's called vitreous humor. Okay. So the white portion of your eye is scleral. It's a very, very tough connective tissue, hot, uh, very hard to cut into. Underneath of the, um, uh, the sclera is choroid, which is full of blood vessels. And then underneath of choroid is retina, which you actually can see. The image is formed on the retina portion of the eye. And retina is made up of, I will show you some pictures, I hope it comes up, that made up of rods and cones. Rods are responsible for your night vision. And cones are responsible for your color vision. And right here, fovea centralis, that's where there is a lot, it's all cones, there is no rods. And there are three types of cones, uh, green, red, and blue. And the combination of the colors, you see pink, because of the combination of these colors, you can see pink. Here is the eye. Uh, so um, here is the uh, uh, nerve cord, 
um, optic nerve right here. So optic nerve, and then here's sclera, uh, choroid, uh, retina. I'm sorry, this is not retina. This is iris, lens, uh, vitreous humor. I talk, talk, talked about that. Here's the blood vessels uh, and um, the orange part right here, that would be, these are blood vessels, as you can see, but the orange part right here, that would be red. Okay, as I talked about rods and cones and um, the portion of the red. So that's where I would like to stop, support the vision. Let me see how long did I talk. Uh, I hope, yeah, I talked about for a good amount. All right, and then we'll uh, catch up on these later on.